As we near the end of the month of November, we have the last Transformer Slag Patreon listener question of the month of November. And if you want to be part of the Transformer Slag Patreon, help support the podcast let us know we're doing a half decent job in the world of transformers transformer news and transformer educational stuff behind the scenes in the world of transformers and its development patreon.com forward slash protoman or check the pinned comment or description below uh if you, what do you get when you join the patreon you get your name in the end credit scroll at the end of every segment moving forward you get to join the transformer slag discord which is a cool place to hang out, talk Transformers, sell your Transformers, find out about deals. Black Friday's coming up, and uh, we're selling all, we're we're sharing all the deals that are happening with Black Friday and all the different retailers. So be sure to check that out too. Uh, depending on what tier, you might even be able to ask a Patreon listener question. We got a Patreon listener question, the last one of the month, from T Formers two thousand two. And Tformers2002 wants to know, hello again, Proto Man. I got a Patreon listener question for you. So recently, I've been buying both the reissues of the Beast Wars figures, as well as starting to dive into some of the vintage figures, and was wondering what is the story behind those mutant heads. I know they were supposed to be in the show, but then were cut. I personally kind of like the idea and want to know more. What's the history behind them, and how would they have been used in fiction? Keep up the good work, T Formers 2002. So thank you for the question and the kind words, T Formers 2002. Um, it's it, you know one thing I, I'm gonna promote another podcast here. Uh, I do another podcast with Aaron Archer, the Toy Armada. It's also on YouTube. We kind of we handle all different toy lines, not just Transformers, and we talk about like the deep behind the scenes stuff of it. And we've recorded a whole bunch of them in advance. And there's a very similar story with the mutant heads, much like what we did when we recorded. It's not live yet as of this recording in November of uh, 2021, but when we talked about Transformers Armada and how when a toy line is developed in its very early stages, there's a hook, a pitch, an idea that's baked into it. And a lot of times the, you know, it's there, it's an afterthought. And then as the line evolves into its final product, it usually disappears as the line continues. And that initial hook is gone and in the case of beast wars one of its biggest hooks was the idea of transformers that turn into lifelike looking animals not just like the dino bots or the predacons and stuff as in the g1 predacons and stuff like that they wanted to have something that's like it looks like a, a real cheetah it looks like a real gorilla a t-rex a velociraptor whatever it is and the concept at the time of doing that at least from the cincinnati office which was kenner that was doing it at the time it wasn't the hasbro side in rhode island to them it was like ooh, you know like that's you know that's a big departure from what we've done up to this point and we need to kind of have some kind of molded in story to convey that that this is these are still transformers and um vinny uh deleva who was at the time from 1989 to 1999, he was the product manager, the marketing director, and the team leader of the Transformer brand, and that pretty much the entire stint of Beast Wars. Uh, his general idea of the mutant head was a way to convey to the fans of previous Transformer stuff that they're still Transformers, but there's something primal going on, something to contain something organic like they're they were trying to convey that. and this is again this is not what was used in the show what was used in the fiction this was something that when the idea was being pitched within the hasbro to, you know and, and kenner family this is how they were pitching it to the big ups and going this is what we're going to go with this is the, the 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 idea and the concept and that's why when you look at the entire run of Beast Wars from 95 to 99 with some in 2000, uh, it's all stuff that's literally within the first two years. And that's it. Because it was all the toys that were developed during those early years that 
the, these ideas were baked in and these ideas were con, you know considered and conceived and as the line progressed 1997 series 3 of beast wars onward outside of obviously repaints all the brand new deluxes and ultra classes up and up from that point didn't have mutant heads anymore the mutant head for people that weren't aware was 1995 and 1996 the molds that were available at the time of deluxe and ultra class along with mega all had what was called a mutant head which was you had a more traditional robot head and something that was a little more organic and related to what they turned into most of the time not always you know beast wars megatron his ultra class had kind of a bat face kind of thing going on outside of his normal robot mode head the funny thing about that was in that development when they were doing that they also were slowly working on the beast wars tv series with mainframe entertainment and the very first early mock-ups of the cg models by mainframe entertainment a lot of those models not all of them but a lot of them had the mutant heads part of them uh you could actually see these early models if you have i believe it's the rhino version of season two of the beast wars dvds i think the newer versions that were done by shout factory also have those extras but i know 100 percent the rhino ones did and again Vinny who, when he was conceiving Beast Wars, also was like a fan of Guyver, which was this anime manga at the time. You know, he kind of like mixed together those Guyver organic elements with the armor wrapping around the face or, or changing the character. Again, all the stuff in early development that when it finally hit retail, it was present, but then slowly disappeared because it was never really meant to stick around in the long run. So the Beast Wars show, they didn't use the mutant heads to a degree. Now, here's where things get interesting. The mutant head is the one that's more organic, animalistic looking. The regular head is the regular traditional robot mode head. The problem is, is that when Beast Wars was being developed, the TV series, Mainframe leaned on some of the characters' mutant heads over that of some of the other characters regular heads so while a character like cheetor had its regular head or optimus primal or rhinox their mutant heads of let's say waspinator or tarantulas were favored to be their traditional head so it kind of worked out ultimately in the end because when certain characters got repaints they would use that alternate head that was available on the toy to kind of represent that alternation of the character. In the case, Tarantulas uses mutant head, but the repaint of Tarantulas Black Arachnia uses the traditional robot mode head. Waspinator uses his traditional mutant head, and when they did Buzzsaw, his box art co conveys this. Obviously, box art, uh, you know, Buzzsaw wasn't in the show, but his box art conveys him with the traditional robot mode head. Uh, a funny example of that, though, is in the case of Tigatron. Tigatron, both him and Cheetor use the traditional robot mode head. Tigatron's box art has infamously been known for using the mutant head, which has this very, like, Greedo with tusks kind of thing going on and uh, all the wackiness with that. But either way, it's it's always been a weird kind of... I guess we'll call it, a, it was a growing pain in the early development of Beast Wars that just kind of got phased out very quickly because ultimately in the end, uh, it was it was used as an explanation to the higher-ups at Kenner and Hasbro of why they're going with all Beast organic stuff. And then when the storytelling aspect and everything started marching forward, they didn't really have to explain themselves at that point. People were willing to accept that Transformers turn into cheetahs and rats and, you know, wasps and stuff like that. But there is an extra element to it, though. Uh, when Beast Wars came out in Japan afterwards, a year later in 96, 97, uh, there was a Japanese book in 1997 called the Beast Wars Character Book. Uh, I believe I posted images of this on my Twitter a while back. And there was a whole section of that book that tried to explain what the mutant heads were with these characters. Now, keep in mind, Beast Wars in Japan, the dub of it, the voice acting of it and the whole script was kind of flipped on its head. It wasn't as serious, it was more comical. So the book kind of reflected that. Now, 
the mutant heads in Japan were called beast faces. That's what they referred to them as, beasto faces. Uh, even though some some char- some characters still called mutento head. Uh, but the explanation for the mutant heads with most of them were tongue in cheek kind of humor. So like Beast Wars Megatron's mutant head, the description was this helmet makes it harder for Beast Wars Mega- Megatron to talk so much. Um, you know, just little silly things like that. Or um, Optimus Primal's mutant head looks vastly different than the convoys of previous time. You know, like little silly things like that. But there wasn't really a deeper explanation for that. And again, because the show itself, some characters were using their mutant heads right off the bat, and those were just their standard heads. The entire idea of mutant heads was just phased out. They weren't even used as battle masks or armors or stuff like that. They were just something completely phased out. And that was that. We were never hearing from them ever again. The closest we ever got to that after the fact is when we got into certain pieces of fiction where certain characters would have their mutant head play some kind of a a storytelling role. Uh, Probably the case of like, let's say T-Rex, right? In the Transformer universe comic book by at the time it was 3 3h entertainment uh t-rex his mutant head was a battle mask so when he, he'd have his normal f- robot mode face and then when it would wrap around the mutant head which is based off of the beast wars megatron one uh, that would be like his battle mask or his, his armor mask and in the case of barbarian um written in his story was that he had a split personality and the mutant head was kind of similar to that of like let's say an animated uh blitzwing where the different heads conveyed different personalities maybe even a little bit like a a quintesson in a small sense but those are actually different different individuals to begin with but do you understand what i mean so they, they tried to a little bit in in post years after Beast Wars was done to kind of have fun with those mutant head ideas that are sculpted on those toys, but nothing really ultimately uh, came to be. And like I said, 1997 onward, the Air Razor year uh, moving forward, they just phased it out. And, you know, stuff like even like an Ultra Class uh, Inferno didn't have a mutant head. You know, trans metals didn't have mutant heads. It was just completely phased out. And all that's left of all the characters that have mutant heads are just the stuff that were based on molds of those early years. And that's it. Of course, we still have stuff that celebrates it. So in the case of, like, let's say the Masterpiece toys, when they did a cartoon accurate Optimus Primal, the MP38 Convoy, legendary leader version it came with a mutant head accessory to kind of throw back to that uh the shadow panther toys shadow panther both his masterpiece and his kingdom version uh celebrates the mutant head version even though that toy when it was first released uh all the i guess we'll call it pr- promotional images celebrated the robot mode head that cheetor face that that cheetor mold that he was based on but the the both the the masterpiece toy and the kingdom version celebrate the mutant head as that and that's kind of the thing that exists now is now mutant heads are kind of like it exists to give an excuse for an alternate character if you do a repaint might as well use the mutant head because everyone recognizes that one and it's kind of a happy coincidence to have that baked in and it's something that we'll probably see more in the future where if we get like you know repaints look at the another example being the mutant tigatron that we're going to be getting from the golden disc collection again uses the mutant head so we might see more of that in the future if you know maybe at some point our waspinator will get a buzzsaw repaint it'll use the alternate head of well in this case the normal robot mode if we get a repaint of rhinox if we get a repaint of uh i'm trying to think um who else do we have you know like cheetor obviously we got the 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 shadow panther the tigatron um you know we have scorponok you know, maybe they'll do uh, they'll do double punch or sandstorm, and they'll put the mutant head on that one. So it's something to consider. It's something to think about because the the 
they still kind of try to celebrate it in a little bit because it's that obscure part of Transformers as Beast Wars past that really was just those early things. And again, going back to what I started this this segment with, with Transformers Armada, Armada also had some of those early ideas that were growing pains that were only available in that first wave of deluxe Transformers in Armada and then never seen ever again. What those things are, you could probably take a guess. I'm just using that as a hook to when we do put out the Armada segment on the Toy Armada uh, channel, you can listen to it and we'll, we'll go deep into that. But again, it's those early, those early little growing pains of Beast Wars that they ultimately grew out of and then moved forward fictionally. But that's kind of what the mutant heads were. Just a little crazy thing from the Transformer past, the Beast Mask, Beast Face, or Mutant Head, whatever you want to call it. There never was really a, a stance 100% on what uh, the, the name was. You know, we stick with Mutant Heads. It's the easiest one with the fans, and Hasbro is... Uh, kind of accepted that as the final term at the end of the day. So I hope that answers your question, T-Formers 2002, and uh, I hope that uh, people learn something about that obscure piece of Beast Wars' history that still pops up once in a while and probably still will pop up in the future. Uh, but if you want to be a patron like T-Formers 2002, again, check the pinned comment or the description below. Proto Man is waiting to see you join the Transformer Slag Patreon. And I uh, hope you have our, all having a great day. It's a beautiful world out there. I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, we'll talk soon.